Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from our niece. Happy birthday to you. Arnie's birthday Zoom, and one of the more positive people. And I didn't know, Tom, I watched Tommy from afar when he played at Purdue, uh, 2008 to 2012, I believe were the days. He is mm -hmm. celebrating a birthday, and he's a, he's still a very young man. He reminded me that before we got uh, on with things. But happy <laughs> birthday, Tommy, 31, right? Not yeah, 32. Yeah, 31. Sorry. 31. And uh, that's a good thing. Tell us where you are right now. You're in your car, which I love that. Anybody wants to yeah. get, he's not driving. We know that. <laughs> But tell me where you are today, because I know you've had a busy day already. Yeah, I just uh, just got back. I'm in uh, I'm in South Florida, uh, South Miami, to be exact. Uh, that's where I'm living nowadays. Uh, been living here since I left uh, since I left uh, good old faithful West Lafayette. Uh, um, I've been here literally since what 2013. 2013. I've been here ever since, man. Well, I usually start these interviews out by what is a birthday tradition, whether a family tradition or something you're going to do today that's special. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like in your family growing up? Uh, how did you how did you do your birthday, so to speak? Well, honestly, man, I was I was a very lucky one, man, growing up. Uh, you know, we didn't have much, but I'll tell you one thing. My mom was superhuman, man. She used to we used to like every around my birthday year. Uh, around my birthday time every year, not every year, but like every other year, yeah, we was in Disney World every year, uh, you oh, know, yeah. with our church, with our church. Yeah. So, you know, that's I was I was one of the lucky ones. So, literally every other year, I was in Disney World every year, you know, for my birthday. But, you know, uh, that was growing up. Nowadays, man, I just now that you know I'm living in you know beautiful uh, South Florida, so you know I at least try my birthday. I at least try to go out and you know have a good either lunch brunch or dinner uh, right off the water, man. And that's, that's like been my tradition. As long as it's not raining, you know, that's my tradition is just to go by, you know, get by the water and just enjoy it. And, uh, and just, you know, just be grateful for every day that I'm here, man. Yeah, good way to do it. And uh, we live vicariously for you folks that uh, live in South, uh, in, in oh, yeah. Miami. And uh, even though in Lafayette, uh, it's warmed up some, but it's a gray, nasty day here in, in oh, Lafayette, yeah. but, or West Lafayette. But all right, now tell us a little bit about what's, what, what's keeping you busy now. You've, uh, uh, yeah. you're known for your great personality. I know you're doing well, yeah. but tell us, tell us about uh, what's, what's your day job is, so to speak, and what is keeping you busy. Man, I'm honestly, Alan, it's just nonstop, man. There's so much, uh, there's so much going on, man. I can't just pinpoint one thing. <laughs> what I'm really, uh, what's what's really, really been my focus, you know, lately has been, uh, I started a nonprofit organization about uh, two years after I left Purdue. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm originally from the south side of Chicago. Right. Robbins, Illinois. Right down the road there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Robbins, Illinois, to be exact. Um, and uh, my main focus was to just, you know, give back. You know, I always wanted to... Uh, make an impact on my community because, you know, uh, growing up, you know, it wasn't, like I said before, it wasn't easy, man. Uh, you know, I'm sure everybody got their story, but, you know, uh, me personally, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't too hard. You know, like I said, my mother was a super, you know, she did everything, made sure we had everything that we needed. You know, um, if we couldn't get it, you know, we couldn't get it, but sooner or later it'd be there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, all we had to do is just, you know, go to school and, play sports and, you know, just find a way to just, just keep busy. So we wouldn't be in yeah. trouble, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, and that, that was, you know, that was my, uh, you know, I didn't really realize it until I actually, when I got to Purdue, I, you know, I started, of course, you know, you started to mature, but in the same sense of maturing while you get into Purdue, you're also like in a stage where God, I'm by myself finally. Yeah. Like yeah. I get to experience, you know, life on my own you know it's time to grow you like you want to grow so fast but now you get so oh you like uh, i wish i could go back you know but um but yeah man you know I, you know you're in that stage to where you're mature but in the same sense you know you you're trying to wiggle and you know and, and experience life on your own and so uh like i said man i've been the, like the uh my foundation uh i started to realize it you know while i was at purdue you know and i uh like i i got a you know 
when I got with Kathy, uh, you know, Kathy, uh, she she um she put a she put a good bug in my ear, man, and uh, about giving back and making sure you know the community. But it was just West Lafayette at the time. You know, we just made sure we did stuff in the community there. You know, yeah. and and while doing that, you know, it really like sparked me. And like I always wanted to do it, but that really like got me going and like really pushed me. Uh, to dig into it but you know my nonprofit organization is called the Tommy Thomas Athletic Foundation and um, what we're pretty much doing is just giving back to uh, you know my local community Robbins Illinois uh, the surrounding communities as well and pretty much what we just you know we just trying to give them an outlet to um, you know to success you know my outlet was literally sports you know without sports yeah. I use sports as, a, as an outlet to be able to get out of the situation that I was in you know, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for sports, I don't know what it was. You know, I wasn't amazing at school when I, you know, growing up, but I got better as the year goes on. Honestly, my best school years was when I was at Purdue. Like it was yeah. like, I, I, that's when I realized I can do more than what I thought I could do, yeah. you know? And so, um, yeah, man, and, and school and, and, and football was literally my outlet to success. So, you know, my message to, you know, to the, to the younger youth and what I, you know, and with my foundation and what I've been, you know, been trying to instill in them is just, you know, it's not going to, you know, a lot of things don't happen overnight. You know, some people grow up into a family that's, you know, that's filthy rich and full of money. You know, some yeah. grow up with everything that they want and not filthy rich, but they get everything they want. You know, they got both parents, you know, they live in a normal life, you know, and then there's some that, you know, that come up and have a little, a difficult, you know, time growing up, you know, and that's okay. You know, it's always a, you know, a pathway to success, you know, it's, it's just, you just have to embrace what they, what you have, you know, and just yep. push forward, you know, and that's what, and that's why I'm just trying to keep them positive and, and give them our list. You know, we have at the school programs, um, we, we donate jerseys, you know, to the local sports teams, you know, we sponsor a lot of sports teams. Uh, we just got, uh, just last year, right before the pandemic, we got a, a $30,000, uh, Thirty thousand dollar, as well as included in those, the thirty grand was the uh, equipment as well. Through uh, we got a, a big donation from Microsoft. Yeah, um, they donated to us, and uh, we was able to, you know, get a lot of things like, um, shoot, man, we got laptops. They gave us laptops, uh, you know, little iPads. Um, they gave us so much stuff, uh, Alan. I can't just pinpoint, you know, yeah. one thing. They gave us, you know, gaming devices, so you know, the kids to have stuff to you know, to keep busy and everything, man. And uh, it's going good, man. We, you know, that's what, that's, that's been my focus literally the past, I would probably say two and a half, three years, just been focused on my, uh, you know, my foundation and just trying to build it, you know, to the best of my abilities and, uh, and get those kids a chance, you know? Well, Kathy Wright Eager gave me your phone because so that's all I got it. Cause she always, She's a friend of mine, and I'm actually going to see oh. her tonight. So I'm going to tell her I'll make sure she gets this video. You got to sing her praises because oh uh, yeah, <laughs> we're planting planting seeds in kids' minds about. I love what you said about the fact that uh, I learned in college that I could be better than I better than I ever thought I could be. That's a big part mm -hmm. of uh, hopefully for the college experience for kids, uh, kids of uh, all all backgrounds, etc. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Uh, I definitely you know when I like I said I. When I got to Purdue, I was, you know, I was nervous, you know, I was yeah. uh, just a freshman, you know, coming from Robbins, Illinois, I don't, you know, I wasn't even supposed to be there, you know, I was just yeah. grateful for the opportunity just to even be there, number one, and, you know, just being on my own without having my, you know, my mother there, and, uh, and I was just experience of a lifetime, but I knew, my main focus was I knew I could not, I could not go back home, you know, yeah in the wrong way you know what i'm saying like I, I if i was going home it was to visit you know not to stay so uh that was my main focus i was scared of that that's what intimidated me more than anything man uh being back home and you know and not being able to finish you know um you know the gift that was given to me so yeah great that's a great story all right you're on a short list of Purdue players that have caught touchdown passes in bowl games which you did in the heart mm -hmm. of dallas bowl uh yeah. and yeah, your career was one that he had injuries and it, it probably didn't go exactly like you planned. He started as a mm -hmm. defensive back. He ended up as a receiver. 
you were a motivational guy and had a big part. So many guys talked about your role on the team, but what did you learn from that? I mean, what did you, what did that teach you about dealing with adversity from an athlete standpoint, student athlete standpoint, and, and how does that impact you now? Um, I would say, honestly, man, I, it, it definitely, you know, it definitely didn't go the way I, you know, I, I really, you know, wanted it to go or I had, you know, I thought it would pan out. Um, you know, just having injuries and, and not only the injuries, man, it just, you know, sometimes you get opportunities, sometimes you don't, man. But, you know, I can't, yeah. I'm not going to, you know, one thing I would never do, you know, fault the people that was there, you know, because yeah. without them, I wouldn't have been there, you know. So, you know, I'm very That's grateful. I'm, I'm very, very grateful for, you know, just the opportunity of being able to get a free education, you know, coming from where I come from. So, um, no, it didn't pan out, you know, athletic wise uh, to where I really wanted to be. Um, but I know one thing, you know, when I went in there, I, you know, I did everything I could, you know, to, to make sure my opportunity, uh, could come and I will be ready for that opportunity. And, um, and that's, man, that's what it is, man. I, I'm so grateful just to be able to, to say, you know, that I went to Purdue University. I played for, you know, uh, Purdue University, man. I played in the big 10. I was able to see and uh, meet so many people, man, that I still like, you know, we'll get to, the, you know, further in the interview, but, you know, I, I have brothers, you know, that I, that I uh, came out of there with, man, and, and the relationships was, was far more important to me, you know, now that, uh, now that I'm done, you know, uh, to me than, you know, than, than, the, than the football would ever be, because, you know, uh, football ends, man, and sports in general, you know, it's always an end date, you know, everybody has an end date when it comes to you know, the careers and goals and, and, and life in general, you know, everybody got an end date. So um, my, my, my experience was amazing. I can't, I can't, I can't complain. I can't complain at all. Alan. I, I, I had so much fun, man. And I appreciated every, everything that came with it, man. You know, outside of, you know, sports, which was the only, I would say you could put a sad face on it, but that's about the only thing that was sad. But, you know, in the same sense, I enjoyed it. Man. I had a great yeah. time. I had an amazing time there. Uh, I knew, you know, at certain at a certain point, you know, throughout your career, of course, you know, you you start to understand and you start to realize, okay, my opportunity may be coming and maybe not. What am I gonna do to to make a difference? You know, what am I gonna yeah. do to be able to uh, be remembered? You know, um, and that wasn't and that wasn't in the plans, man. You know, to to be out there on the field every every Saturday, and uh, you know, get the opportunity that m my brothers may have been getting. But, you know, I tried to make sure that my brothers was having a good time, having a good yeah. day, you know, making sure that yeah. they was, you know, ready to go and, and, and doing everything they can to, you know, to uh, help us get a win. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and that was my main focus, man. I knew I had to do something, man. And then I was living in the same sense, man. I'm living with, you know, with our quarterback. You know, he's my, yeah. this is my, my best friend. You know, I'm living with him. And uh, I can't be walking around the house slouching and, you know, yeah. being down because, because I'm not getting the opportunity and, you know, and stuff like that, you know, I got to make sure, you know, he's ready to go, man. Cause he had a big task at hand. Man. So uh, I was, you know, I, I, like I said, I, everything, I enjoyed every, every moment, man. If I could get a, a more, if I could go back and, and, and say, what I, what can I do different? I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything different. Yeah. I would continue to, you know, work and, and wait for my opportunity. And then uh, if it comes, it comes, if it don't, it don't. But man, that, just going through all of that, you know, and switching positions, which I didn't mind, you know, I, in the, in the, in the, uh, what, what, what a lot of people don't know is I wanted to switch positions. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love the, you know, I played uh, def defensive back, you know, my whole career. That was the first position I ever played was safety. And, um, you know, I didn't mind, you know, I didn't mind it. You know, I loved it. That's what I was the best at, I would say, but I also play receiver, uh, you know, half the years that, you know, when I got there, I was playing with, I played for what, like five or six years, five to six years. I played since I was like 13. Yeah. Um, I was playing receiver since I was like 13. So, you know, I, yeah. I was used to playing receiver as well. So I didn't mind it. You know, it wasn't a huge thing. And, that, and I knew we were short at that position. So I wanted to switch, you know, to make an impact. You know, I was, yeah. I was always willing to, you know, help and, you know, in any way I could. And, uh, and so I agreed, you know, they, when they came to me and asked me about it, you know, I agreed to it because, you know, I knew it was something that we needed and I knew, you know, I could probably get opportunity, you know, faster than if I was to just stay at, you know, uh, safety. So, 
uh, you know, I, I welcomed it with open arms, man, and uh, and it was amazing, man. I can't, I, I can't, I can't complain at all, man. I can't complain. That brother you talk about, Robert Marv, right? And it mm -hmm. was your was your roommate. And tell me about not only him, but also other guys that you stay from that era, that teammates that you stay uh, most uh, most in uh, touch with or have the opportunity to reach out to. Yeah, uh, God, man, I can't. <laughs> I'm in a group chat with, I can probably say about seven guys. Yeah. That's one group chat. But another group chat with like, I was probably, what is it, four or five guys. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's so many, it's so many guys. Now I'm, I stay in contact with Raheem Mostert, uh, yeah. Keem Hunt, uh, of course, Robert, um, KK, Kawan Short. Yeah. Talk to him all the time, see him all the time. Um, who else do I talk to? I talk to Robert Henry. I talk to Gabe Holmes, Gary Bush, Chris Quinn, uh, Al Tariq McPherson. He was there for a while. Yeah. He ended up. Yeah, I remember Al Tariq. Yeah. Um, uh huh. Xavier Reese as well. Yeah. Um, who else, man? It's so many. It's so many people, man. I still talk to Albert Evans. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who else? Uh, Man, I, I know I'm forgetting somebody. Well, man. That, that's pretty. That's, 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 so many. that's an ind indication of what uh, you were. You were. You were the hub of some of those people. I'm, I'm guessing, and still remain that way. One of my favorite memories of you is at the center. The center. The cancer challenge. I think we used to get you up on the stage to dance to get everybody <laughs> going. And you, we have yet. Yeah. And I'm still involved with that race. We obviously haven't had in the last couple of years due to COVID, but there hasn't been anybody like number 12 up there in, in his jersey getting people going. We, we talk about oh, you man. every year about your ability to get people, <laughs> just that infectious part of getting everybody ready. You got 2,000 people ready to run a race and you're up there mm -hmm. uh, uh, getting it done. Yeah, man, I, I definitely miss that, man. You know, it's crazy. I was, I was telling my, uh, I was telling my buddies, um, that uh that I was doing this project with, you know, we was doing a uh, we was talking about you know the cancer uh, cancer research programs and stuff like that and and, um, uh, and before I mention that, Alan, I just want to take the time uh, during the interview, man, just to ask that everybody you know send that prayers out to my family. My mother uh, was diagnosed with cancer not too long ago, um, and uh, it's a liver cancer. And so she's fighting that right now. She's actually in chemotherapy as we speak right now. Yeah. Um, uh, so back her. in Chicago, man. So I just ask that, uh, you know, everybody send our prayers and, and well wishes to us, man. Uh, she's a she's a fighter, man. So she's yeah. uh, she's definitely I'm, I'm sure she she will come out of this stronger, you know, and uh, and uh, definitely. Uh, and definitely uh, in, in good spirits, you know, so mm -hmm. um, but it's is. It's funny that you said that, you know, the cancer research, because it's crazy how, you know, how full circle it comes, man. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, you don't want it, but, you know, it's yeah. crazy because it's always been special to me and I always took a, uh, and that's why I always took the initiative to, you know, um, to make sure I made an impact uh, and do, you know, and just, uh, and just make my presence be known with, you know, with stuff like that, because, you know, you never know, man, you know, yep. you never knew, man. And, uh, and when, 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 like I said, when Kathy, uh, told me, you know, you know, got the opportunity, and uh, I remember the day they came to me. I think it was Kathy, and then I got a uh, Coach Hope had uh, called me, yeah, and he was asking me. He was like, "Hey T, do you wanna, um, you wanna help out with the cancer research uh, uh, program or whatever the case may be?" And uh, you know, they're gonna do stuff at the spring game and all of that stuff. I said, "Yeah, of course." You know, I didn't, you know, I never turned anything down. Of course, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, man, of course." I, you know, I wouldn't mind. And then he was like, "Okay, you can get with Kathy, and she's gonna tell you what you need to do and all that stuff." And blah blah blah. So then I ended up getting other guys to come and stuff like that. And uh, and I always, you know, I just I I just tried to have a good time with it, man. And uh, you know, make sure people, you know, understood that, you know, we were more than athletes, man. We weren't just, you know, robots that, you know, just go outside, you know, go out there and run into each other all the time. And you know, we don't have a life outside of that. So I just wanted to let every, just pretty much uh, show everybody our personality and just let them know that, you know, we enjoy. Uh, you know, our normal life as well, you know, outside of the, you know, the helmets and the shoulder pads. So uh, that was a big thing for me, man. That's why I always took, uh, I took pride in uh, making sure that everybody knew that, you know, uh, we had a good group of guys with us, you know, the years that I was there.
Yeah, you guys made a big difference for that, set the stage for that, but also just your presence. You know, it's hard to hard to underestimate that and importance to all those people. And like you said, with your mom, you know, everybody has to deal with cancer. It seems like in this world, and uh, and and you get a chance to make a difference. And I know now, I knew it anyway, but I know now that you mm -hmm. are making a difference, and that's a great thing. So I wish you a happy birthday. I wish you your best for Thank your mom, and she is in her battle as well. And uh, we look forward to, uh, we'll run into you in ross Aid Stadium before long, I hope, and up in West Lafayette, when, uh, whether it be 2021 or whenever you're back back on campus. Mm -hmm. But uh, have a great rest of the day, and thanks so much for uh, being part of our Arnie's birthday Zoom. It's, it was great to have you on. Yeah, thank you so much, Alan. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to think about me, man. You know, I, uh, I haven't been back to West Lafayette, you know, since I left, but you know, I was. I, we actually planned, like I said, we plan, I talked to the guys, and we planning on we planned on going back last year, but of yeah. course the pandemic stopped us. But we'll definitely be there this year, man. And uh, of course, you know, I'll be back. You know, the first year we uh, we bring back the cancer research program. Uh, uh, well, the we're cancer, gonna get, we're, the gonna get, we're gonna get an invitation out to you. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh yeah, that, we're know. gonna. Either that, or we'll get a, we'll get a, we'll get, if we, if for some reason you can't make it, we'll get you on video because you set the stage for that, and that was a big part of a, a big part of a, the success of that race. It's a great race, and uh, we're looking forward to 2022. We'll have it in, in in April, and looking forward to that as well. So have a great rest of the day. Happy birthday, and uh, thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much, Alan. Boiler up, baby.